Hello, welcome to Ham Radio Basics. Whether you've had your license for a while and just hadn't really gotten on the air, or you're new to Ham Radio and ready to make that first contact, this is the series for you. So let's see what we've got going with K5ATA Ham Radio. Morning YouTube. Today we're learning how to make a 40 meter dipole. We want to go activate some parks for parks on the air and we're hoping to have a good time. So check it out on K5ATA Ham Radio. Okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the legs of the dipole. This is actually some antenna wire that we took down from an old antenna at a ham's house who moved away. We're just going to repurpose it and make it into a dipole or two. So we're going to want two, we're going to start with 35 feet, 34, 35 feet. Um, ideally, they're probably going to end up about 33 and a half or something like that. But that gives us room to tie it off and to trim it for SWR. Okay, so one of the main things that we need to have for a dipole is center insulators. So you can go buy some, but I don't really want to spend 10, 15 bucks or whatever they're going to charge for a center insulator, especially for an antenna that I'm just going to use as a portable parts on the air kind of antenna. So instead, we went to Walmart. 88 cents. You can get a cutting board for 88 cents. It's not the thickest cutting board in the world, but it's thick enough. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a little shape. Kind of like so. and So I can wrap each leg of the antenna on each side. Um, drill some holes in here to be able to attach the legs to the of the antenna. And that way, in one unit here, I've got... A carrying not a case but I can carry it um, and I can deploy it and use this piece as the center insulator for the ends I'm just going to use little electric fence insulators that I happen to have on hand but let's get this thing cut out and we'll see what it looks like so basically on the scroll saw I just cut out four little grooves I guess for lack of a better word this one probably needs to be made a little more deep to kind of match but it's not really that important whether it matches or not this is just to hold the two legs of the dipole um, I'm going to go ahead and I guess make that a little more symmetrical because otherwise you know it's just the way it is um, next we're just going to pop some holes in the middle to attach the legs onto I went on ahead and left the handle because well, you can carry it by that. So let me go ahead and get these holes popped in here so that we can get those legs attached. Also, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole here and here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because you may want to hang, hang it like in an inverted V or something like that. I'm doing both ends just because you know, I don't see why not. But that way you can loop paracord or something through there and hang it up in the tree from one of those ends and then have the legs come down from here. So let me go ahead and get those holes drilled real quick. Okay, so here we have the cutting board. This, like I said, is just an 88 cent cutting board. Grab it at that big blue store. Um, and I cut out, I didn't even, you know, draw it out neatly. You can draw it out if you want it to be perfectly symmetrical. I just kind of sort of got them close. And what you can do is you're going to take a couple bolts and a washer. And these are actually a little long. You can go definitely much shorter than this. And we're going to attach these here. And the reason for these is this is what the legs of the antenna are going to attach to so that they have that support and they're going to run out sideways. Um, additionally, we're going to have the coax come up here and we're going to solder the center insulator to one side and the braid to the other side and so that's going to give support there. I'm just going to support it in the middle here um, with zip ties. You can do <clears throat> excuse me you can do little curved bolts on there if you want to or whatever um, but I'm just going to do zip ties because I may end up wanting to change something up or whatnot, and well, zip ties are what I have handy. So, 
you know, you're looking at, you can actually do this even with speaker wire. Okay, so you can do this entire project for not a whole lot of money. You got less than a buck in your insulator in the middle, um, a few bucks for some speaker wire going out to each side, a few cents for, you know, maybe a dollar in hardware altogether, zip ties, which most of us probably already have. If not, you can pick those up at the dollar store. Um, and that's it. Um, as far as insulators on the end, I'll show you what I'm doing for that. Although you can do pretty much anything on the insulator on the end. You can use a piece of PVC pipe that you drill a couple holes in and go that way. So let me get this thing all mounted up. Okay, and you can see I've got this side's already got some solder on there. Let me finish that up. You want to get it nice and completely embedded in there. And then you'll end up waterproofing it. This is actually going to be used for Parks on the Air POTA stuff. So it's not quite as important that it be completely waterproofed. It's not going to stay out. This will be purely portable operations for me. But if you're going to end up using it, there we go, look at that, flowing good. If you're going to end up using it for a, a permanent antenna, then you'll want to make sure that it's sealed up with, you can get a tape or something to wrap around it to seal it silicone, something to seal that up. <clears throat> All right, and so that's there. So now we're going to mount this to the posts. So, I'm going to let that cool. And we're going to tighten this down. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Get out of the way a little bit. And just kind of... And you want it so that it's going to come around and absorb the weight of the actual antenna itself onto that post there instead of on the wire and the soldering joint. Oops, there we go. So we tighten that up. Let me get the trusty pliers out and we'll get this all tight. <clears throat> These pliers have been around the block once or twice. Nice thing about dipole antennas, you measure it right and you're resonant on that frequency and you don't necessarily need a tuner. Okay, now. Make sure that this is not going to touch that one over there. You don't want to short these two out. Well, once we get that stuck down there, you'll see that it'll be okay. Okay, and oops, here we go. Let's. Alright, so those are, well, that one could stand to be repaired up. Okay, so now we have these two legs that are going to go out, 
going to make sure we're in we're separating these right here. I'm gonna put some electrical tape on there. And what we're gonna do, get this out here a little bit. Okay. And so what we'll actually do is we'll wrap our leg, the wire. Actually, let me go ahead and uh, zip tie that on. Give us some stability there. Zip tie. Come around it. Come through it. What's that? Come around it. because they're going to hold that coax on there. I'm going to snip those off to get them out of my way. Oops, if I pick up the right pliers. All right, go ahead and snip those off, get them out of the way. And now we'll get the legs wrapped up on here. So now we've got the antenna wrapped up. I'm still going to electrical tape those up a little bit. Um, I'm using electric fence insulators for my ends because I can fit paracord right through there and make that work. So, um, like I said, though, you can use anything for those insulators as long as it's, you know, an insulator, wood, plastic, whatever. And that's that. So you'll notice, <clears throat> okay, I've actually got this a little bit longer. And the reason for that is because rather than cut it off, I just kind of wrap it back upon itself. That way, if my SWR is not quite right, um, I can adjust that just by adjusting the ends. You know, I can pull more through and wrap it around or pull less through and wrap it around and adjust it that way. So for very little money, you know, the most money you'll have in this is your feed line. You've got a 40 meter dipole. Now I chose 40 meters because when I activate parks on the air, that's where I like to, to go because 40 is generally decent in the daytime and in the evening, but you know, you can make it for whatever frequency you want using that formula. And I'll link to a little calculator down below that you can calculate your length and whatnot for it. So, but that's it. So, um, any questions or anything, comment below, hit like, hit subscribe. We do appreciate it. And we hope to see you on the air.